Hey guys, my name is Pedron and I'm a professional practice assistant professor in finance. I'm also a CFA charter holder. This is another episode of my crash course in machine learning concepts, Simply Explained. All right, part six, cross-validation technique in machine learning. Let's dig into it. To understand the concepts of cross-validation, we need to first review some basic definitions. For example, what do we mean by partitioning of the data set? The data set is typically divided into three over, non-overlapping samples. So imagine this is our data set D, and we are going to divide it into three parts. And let's say this uh, data set D has 100 observations, right? So the first part is going to be roughly about 60 observations, and we call it train set, right? And the train set is used to train the model. This is where the parameters are being learned. The parameters of the model are being learned. The second set is what we call validation set, right? And let's say this has 20 observations out of 100, so maybe 20%. This is a set which is used for validating and tuning the model. Basically, this is the part that the hyperparameters of the model are being optimized. And finally, this, there's something what we call the test set, and it's usually 20 to 30% of the data, but let's say in this example, 20%, and is used for testing the model's ability to predict well on new data, right? Because, guys, remember, it is important to test the model on something that the model has not already seen, right? Because otherwise, it's going to be cheating. If I test the model on the train set, there's, it's, there, there's no point of doing that because the model has already seen that part of the data. Also note that uh, the training set and validation set are sometimes referred to as in-sample, and the test set is referred to out-of-sample set. Okay. So to be valid and useful, any supervised machine learning model must generalize. So this is a term. It must generalize well beyond the training data. We need to make sure that our model is performing well on something it hasn't seen before, right? And so as you can see, we need to divide the data into three parts, right? So this, this, this suggests that in machine learning, we need to have some uh, basically large data sets. But what if, what if we don't have that large data set? Let's see what can, what can we do with that. So if the data set is not large enough, we need to do something which is called resampling methods. One of the resampling methods is called cross-validation. You know, down the road in this course, I'll talk about different resampling methods as well. So for example, what is bootstrapping? What is the oversampling by doing some synthetic sampling and et cetera. But right now, let's focus on cross-validation. So sometimes, as we said, we cannot afford to split the data into three parts because the algorithm may not learn anything from a small training data set, right? So let's see what I mean by that. Remember, the algorithm is going to learn the relationship between variables, basically the patterns in the data, uh, by going over the train set, right? So basically, the, if the train set is small, then the algorithm may, may not learn anything. It's, it's going to have a hard time pinning down the parameters of the model if the train set is small. From the other hand, having small validation set is also problematic because the algorithm cannot tune the hyperparameters pro properly. Remember, the hyperparameters are being tuned, being optimized in the validation set. So in this case, what is the solution? The solution is combining the training and validation set, okay? So this is the basic idea. We're gonna say that instead of dividing the data into three parts, you know, training, validation, and test, we're gonna make it into two parts. And so first part is going to be the training set. The second part is going to be our test set, which is also referred to as holdout set, right? So this way we are going to have a larger train set and in that way, uh, there's a hope that the model is being trained using a larger data set. And then after that, we're going to use cross-validation on the train set in order to do two things. First of all, by doing the cross-validation, we can tune the hyperparameters. And secondly, we use cross-validation to estimate the performance of the model in the test set. So we use cross-validation in order to estimate the performance of the model in test set as well. 
So the goal is to obtain additional information about a fitted model, right? For example, to provide estimates of the test set prediction error, or to, if it is regression of the test set uh, the MSC or RMSC. All right. Now, what is k-fold cross-validation? So remember, we're going to use the train set and apply cross-validation over the train set, right? So how do we do that? We're going to divide the train set into k roughly equal size and non-overlapping groups. So for example, here, we are going to divide our train set into five folds. One, two, three, four, five, right? We leave out one fold, in this case here, and fit the model to the other remaining k minus one folds, right? Finally, we obtain the predictions for the left out fold. So this is our left out fold. So we're gonna uh, train the model using these four folds and test it here. Test it on something that the model has not seen before, right? On, the, on that kth fold. And report the performance in that fold, okay? Then the performance can be anything, right? If, if it is regression, for example, it can be MSC, RMSC. If it is classification, it can be accuracy, a fun score, you know, the precision, recall, and you name it. And we're going to repeat this process k times over k iterations, right? So here, uh, again, we divided the, data, the train data into five fold and we repeat this process five times. So in the next time, we're going to take this one as our holdout set and then train the model here, test it here. In iteration number three, we are going to take this one as our holdout set, train the model here, and test it here, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. At each fold, at each iteration, we are going to report the performance of the model. And finally, we are going to combine these performance by taking a simple average, for example. So here, k is equal to 5. We take the average of, let's say, 5 RMSE, and we call it, if it is, for example, if it is regression, we call it RMSE1 and etc. And this thing is going to be our RMSE cross validated version. Okay, so uh, we already talked about uh, step number three. We have to do this uh, iteration k time. Okay, and so that was the idea of cross validation. So basically, we use k fold cross validation to simulate the validation set and at the same time. Uh, estimating the performance of the model in the test set. So this is the, the, how beautifully cross-validation is able to do that, okay? And uh, so there's another terminology which is uh, we refer to leave one out cross-validation. And it is the case when there is only one observation in each fold left out, right? So for example, if, you, if, you're, if your sample has 100 observation, if your train set has 100 observation, you can uh, iterate, go over it 100 times, and each time leave one of the observations out and uh, per report the performance of the model on that uh, one observation, okay? So train the model on the 99 observation and report the performance on that one observation and repeat this process 100 times and then take the average and say that this is a cross-validated performance metric. So just to summarize, remember guys, the cross-validation is always applied to train set and it's used for validating the model basically tuning the hyperparameters make sure that the model is not overfitting and also to get an estimate of the test set performance of the model performance in a test set in the k-fold cross validation we implicitly assume that the observations in those k-folds are independent from each other but this is not necessarily the case with time series, right? So for time series, we have to do time series cross-validation because with time series, we cannot simply shuffle the data. And we also need to make sure that we are avoiding the look-ahead bias, right? We need to make sure that by the time that, they're making, that we're making the predictions, the future data is not already available, so we are not cheating, okay? So let's look at different types of time series cross-validation, and, uh, and these are the most commonly used ones. So one is walk forward cross validation expanding windows, and the other is walk forward cross validation rolling windows. 
Okay, so let's see what, what is the idea of expanding windows versus rolling windows and where we should use each versus the other one. Okay, so starting with the uh, expanding windows. So the idea is very simple, right? So imagine this is your data set and this is our time axis, right? So basically we say that, okay, to, let's say here, use this part of the data set to train the model and test it on this part of the data set. Right. Next, we're going to say that, okay, let's expand this train set. So we're going to take the entire thing here, call it train set and test it here in the test set and et cetera, et cetera. Next step, we're going to take all this part. We're going to expand the window I call it train set and test it on the test set. Right. So by doing this, we just need to make sure that we're not using this part of the data as train set, right? Because this is what we call avoid look ahead bias. We just need to make sure that by the time that we're making predictions, we're not using this information, which is not available at that time. Okay. And so this was the idea of expanding windows, walk forward cross validation using expanding windows. On the other hand, we have the idea of rolling windows. So what is rolling windows? This is our data and we're going to say, okay, let's take this part of the data, train the model here, test it here. And then we're going to, let's say this, this is the window. We're going to shift this window to the right, right? So this is our rolling window. We shift it instead of starting from, uh, from the beginning of the data set from the time series, we, we're going to start, uh, let's say, keep uh, time series rolling windows off, let's say 60 days, right? So this is. 60 days, for example, and you're rolling it forward. So 60 days, 60 days, 60 days, and et cetera, et cetera. Now, why do you think we should use, for example, rolling windows versus expanding windows? What do you think? Well, especially in financial time series, it's, it's usually the case that uh, there's a structural change in the data, especially in the earlier part of the data. Imagine uh, we are talking about a stock stock price, and let's say you're thinking of a, a company like Tesla, right? Back in the days, the growth was different. The company was in the growth uh, is was just in its initial steps, and then after a couple of years or after five years, there was a huge uh, structural change in the in the in the in the behavior of the stock price of the, of that company, right? Or any kind of other growth company. So for those kind of time series, it doesn't make any sense to go from the beginning of the data sets to the very latest days of the data set, right? So it's better, it's, it's going to be a better idea to roll, to roll that uh, window over time. Let's say, let's look at the stock market price for every 60 days before and then roll that window forward. Okay. Nowadays, there are uh, more advanced uh, time series cross-validation techniques available and, and which I'm not going to talk about them here, but maybe in the future videos, I, I will cover them. Basically, some techniques like purge k-fold cross-validation, which uh, use the ideas of pur purging and embargoing, basically by removing the overlaps from train and test set and just making sure that uh, those overlaps and data leakage is avoided. All right, let's wrap it up by going over the question of the day. So I want you to write me in the comment section that how we can fill in the blank. What should be right? What should be written here? All right. Uh, I hope to see you in the next episode. Until then, take care.